Spencer, when this game was a 21 point lead in that first quarter and you guys took had the lead at halftime, how were you guys able to kind of cut into it? And what did you guys do so quickly? Um, I think De'Ron turned the flow of the game. Um, and obviously credit to them, like they came out, hit eight out of 10 threes to start. Um, part of, a, I mean, them just being locked in, shooting well. Um, also us, you know what I'm saying, not having the attention to detail, focus coming out a little flat on the back to back. But, uh, you know, credit the veteran leadership on the team and, you know, Royce Doe, Mikhail Cam, and, you know, understanding that we could definitely get back in the game, cool off their shooting a little bit, just keep making plays. And like I said, they run changed the whole, uh, just context of the game. And when that game did change, at what point did you guys realize as a group that you guys could take advantage from downtown the way that you guys were able to do? I don't think we ever thought we could, you know, so I, I don't think like confidence wavered or anything like that. And then obviously, you know, with us starting small, um, I mean, the purpose of that was to try to, you know, shoot them out of their size, basically, um, which didn't happen at the beginning. But as the game wore on, uh, you know, credit to JV and his scheme for, you know, it prevailing. Considering, I mean, the way you guys started the game shooting, though, I think like whatever, one of 10 when you were down like 22 to three. I mean, have you ever seen shooting shift that dramatically uh, that quick? Uh, not, like not, not, not really. I mean, I, I, I couldn't put my finger on a game that happened with that type of flow. But you got to remember, though, you got Royce and Doe, career 40% three-point shooters, Mikhail, big-time shooter, Cam Johnson, one of the best shooters in the league all the time, 45 in that range. I mean, they're going to make shots. You feel me? So it's not a situation where you're thinking, damn, like, you know, we're, we're not playing well just because we're one for 10. I mean, at the same time, if we were three for 10, you'd be in a – relatively solid range and four for 10, you'd be in a spectacular range, right, as a group. So, you know, it's just two, three missed shots when it's that early in the game. You can't, you know, live and die on just two, three missed shots in the first quarter. And how big was that two, three, the two, three zone and kind of throwing a wrinkle in? Oh, I think it was great. I mean, obviously they're not known for their shooting just across the board. Um, so, you know, like, again, that credit to them, they came out hot, they made shots eight out of 10 to start. But overall, I mean, percentages are the way they are for a reason. You know, and so we played into that. And as they started to miss, you know, we started to climb back into the game and use the great fans at Barclays Center and the momentum to, you know, come out on top. Is it a luxury having guys, those guys you mentioned, all the shooters, Royce, Lonnie, Cam, so many guys where if one, guy's, if one guy isn't hitting, someone's going to hit? Is it just kind of a luxury like today's show where so many guys can hit threes? Yeah, I mean, JV's been preaching depth since the beginning. We have a bunch of guys. I mean, you know, we still got CT out. You know, Cam Cam left the game kind of early. I mean, but just across the board. I mean, we even threw A B in there, and A B, quiet as kept. I mean, he's a top two shooter on the team. Him and Cam Johnson got the purest uh, shot on the roster, and that's not even talking about Lonnie, who you know damn near lead us in scoring every night. So, you know, it's a it's an embarrassment of riches right now. We got a bunch of guys that can really play well and and, and be impactful, and you know, we we're looking forward to being in full health. Speaking of Lonnie, have you been either surprised or impressed by his consistency when now he's been getting this opportunity? Um, I mean, I think consistent opportunity breeds consistency on the floor. I think everybody's known he's had talent. You know, he's got some of the sickest highlights, uh, you know, in the league. That that layup where everybody jumped off the bench from the opposing team is crazy, you know. And then he had that, that game last year against Golden State, right, where he won the Lakers the game. So he's been able to do it in spots. You know, you give a man a consistent opportunity and, you know, he'll show you what he got. How much you're looking forward to Tuesday and the chance to kind of advance in the plan if you handle business right? Oh, I mean, I don't know all the specific rules. I know we got to win by a certain amount, but I mean, shoot, who don't like money? <laughs> Straight up. Like, hey, listen, half a million dollars. I pay for my Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about this tournament being important for the league in terms of this big picture, but just have you seen it just kind of having that impact with guys being more invested and just kind of how it can, you know, generate some more interest at this point now? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's fun, right? Everybody's playing hard. Everybody's competing. It's a new wrinkle. Fans are excited. They say it's like another, what, billion dollars in revenue for the league. I mean, the league's going to do its best for the league at all times, and I think that's why we're one of the most innovative leagues, you know, in the world. So, you know, credit to Adam Silver and, and – you know, the brain trust, whoever else is in that brain trust. I don't know everybody over there um, that created it. And, you know, it's just, if it's good for the league, I'm all for it. I'm saying at the end of the day, you want to leave the league in a better place than, than you found it. And so if this is something that the fans really buy into, then it's our, our duty to get at full effort.